delighted to welcome Lamont Bagby to This Week in Virginia. Uh, Lamont's no stranger to people around the Commonwealth and particularly in Henrico County where he represents part of the county and served on the county school board before being elected to the General Assembly in 2015. A Norfolk State graduate and also uh, after that VCU uh, serving on four committees, sub chair and two of those committees. And Lamont, really interested in having you update our viewers with this special session, any of the issues that you'd like to talk about in the special session. It looks like it might be getting close to the end now here in October. Yeah, yeah the end is in sight. I think we should be done within the week. Uh, well, we should have the budgets on our desk tomorrow, uh, the, the, the conference budget on our desk tomorrow. Uh, uh, and I know this will broadcast later, uh, but by the time this broadcast, we will be done with the budget. Uh, now, that's not to, to point out the fact that it's taken a, a, a quite some time, but we've, we've worked on some issues that aren't, uh, aren't easy. They're actually a ra rather complicated. Uh, uh, focus on not only we respond to COVID-19, which no one was expecting and no one was fully prepared for, uh, also, how we address cr criminal justice reform, uh, and uh, so we ha we had a lot of, of things uh, on our plate. And uh, criminal justice reform is not coupled with policing uh, and making sure that we uh, are fair uh, to not only the police but also the individuals in, in which uh, they serve and the constituents that we represent. I know that uh, there have been some changes, I mean, some differences between what the Senate has done and about what your chamber, the House, has done. To, so you still have some negotiation to uh, get the, those final bills on to the governor? Yeah, well, we have some challenges associated with some of the criminal justice uh, legislation that particularly the Black Hawkers uh, was, was championing. Uh, and it, it most, uh, most of that uh, legislation passed the House, uh, but found a hard time uh, in the Senate, as we, as we say, quarter coal in the Senate. Uh, and so uh, the legislation uh, either uh, was uh, killed or watered down. And so we still have work to do and we'll be back uh, in January to tackle that. One of the pieces of legislation that, that, that really was important was uh, Dolores McQueen's legislation uh, making it clear on monuments and, and, and and, and getting, rid of, getting rid of some of the loopholes associated with monuments. One of the uh, loopholes is, uh, really was a loophole for VMI. And I think that's unfair and, and unfortunate that, that in this time, we will still be trying to create loopholes. Now, in that particular bill, did the Senate go along with the House version? Or no, that it, particular it, bill it passed, passed the House uh, and fail the Senate. Okay. So there's like, like you were saying before, there's still the, uh, 2021 session that begins January 13. We'll take up some of these issues that didn't get resolved here in the special session. And, 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 and uh, also Lamont, in the 2021 season, uh, 21, 2021 session, we'll have a better understanding of where we are with the budget, uh, back in, uh, the last time I spoke with, with with you, it looked even rougher than what we ended up with uh, with this budget. wasn't bad as we initially thought, and I think as we approach um, uh, January and the governor reforecast uh, has the staff reforecast the budget in December, I think it will be uh, we'll be in a in a better position to uh, uh, fund some of our priorities. Uh, and also just talking to Senator Warner just yesterday, uh, they feel, feel real confident at some point they will be able to send some relief, not only to help the, uh, uh, us on the state level, but also to help the localities. Because if you help the localities, uh, you help everybody. And, and Lamont, when you said we're talking about tomorrow, we'll tell our viewers we're talking on Tuesday the 13th. You were talking about Wednesday the 14th, and some people will be seeing this show tomorrow on the 14th. So we hope that you do have that that budget in, in front of you to be uh, trying to get that 
the final kinks worked out of it so they could be sent on to the governor. Yeah, and one of the big things we're working on with the budget and working with them, uh, with the governor and, and his administration is making sure that we get the CARES Act funds out the door and, and those resources to the people that need them the most. Uh, we've done a lot associated with uh, evictions, a lot associated with moratoriums, associated with utilities. Uh, what we're really trying to do is keep people whole, keep families whole, keep people in their homes warm uh, and, 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 and healthy. Uh, and everything else we can sort out later, but we want to make sure people are, 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 are have food, clothing, and shelter, and health. And as everyone viewing this knows, that's really essential, and you can't go until January to get this resolved. It needs to be resolved here in the fall to help help people between now and January 13th. And And even when you come back on the 13th, you won't get something passed immediately, probably that day. Yeah, I mean, everyone everyone falls in love with their legislation and wants their bill uh, accomplished right now. Uh, but when you take a step back, we got we have to really think about what people need right now. And uh, I think we were able to get much of that accomplished and put Virginians in a good space uh, to get through what I hope is the tail end of COVID. Delegate Bagby, I've been saying Lamont, but Delegate Lamont Bagby, uh, Chair of the Legislative Black Caucus, representing a part of Henrico County. I appreciate your making the effort to get someplace where we could have this conversation today. And I wish you and your colleagues, and, and as you would say, the ones in the other chamber, I wish them well tomorrow on when you're back to try to resolve these matters. So uh, thank you very much and look forward to having the next conversation with you. Thank you. Thank you. Always a pleasure to be with you. I appreciate everything you're doing. And as you, as, you know, we have a lot to look forward to, but we also have a lot to look back and be proud of. Yes. Thank you very much. Delighted to welcome Delegate Sam Rasool from the city of Roanoke uh, to this week in Virginia. Sam began serving in 2014, a graduate of Roanoke College and Hawaii Pacific University. That sounds like a fun, exotic place to, to be. You serve on four committees in the General Assembly. You're a vice chair of a key committee in, in health, welfare, and institutions. And, and Sam, Thinking of health, that, that moves me right into one topic I'd like for you to talk with our viewers about. You are one of the members of the General Assembly, not the only one, but one who has uh, had COVID-19. I say past tense, it may, it may still be present tense, but uh, tell us about you and your family's uh, journey through this time of COVID-19. Yeah, well, thank you so much, David. Uh, certainly a uh, pleasure to be with you again. I uh, appreciate all the good work that, that you're doing in the General Assembly. Uh, about three months ago, my family and I uh, contracted uh, COVID-19. We had tried to be pretty careful um, and be diligent. Uh, unfortunately, we let our guard down around a, a family member who turned out to be asymptomatic. So someone who never got sick, but actually during that period of time had been tested and tested positive. And uh, so, um, you know, it was quite the experience. Uh, my wife and I uh, would be considered, uh, you know, mild cases in certain respects, but I think the scariest thing is there's a, uh, for me, there were days where we had trouble breathing and the heaviness of the chest. So outside of the flu-like symptoms that you have, that was something that was new to me and you especially feel it when you lay down to try to go to sleep. So it was a little difficult. The children just had mild fevers, uh, but in my experience, uh, it, you know, while COVID is long gone out of my system, the damage comes from the inflammation um, that it causes all over our, our bodies. And so what I learned and tried to do was to manage that inflammation uh, as best we can. Um, 
you know, I got back to exercising after a couple few weeks and then exercising regularly. Uh, I can still feel my body healing, uh, the immune system and some of the inflammation in different parts uh, all throughout your, your brain, your lungs, um, your, your heart. Um, uh, but fortunately, we were a, a mild case and uh, we're all just trying to stay safe now. You know, when you mentioned the mild case and yet still still having someone to battle with it, um, I have a sister-in-law in Tennessee. Uh, she and her husband uh, are, are in, still in that time of dealing with the, with the issues that came about afterwards. And I think that uh, contrary to, to what some think that they might just get over it immediately, it doesn't really happen. The last conversation I had with, with your colleague, Delegate Dolores McQuinn, that I hope she's doing much better now. It was maybe a few weeks ago, but she was still having the, the, the time of dealing with some of that lingering uh, part that gets in your system and doesn't get out as quickly as the flu does. Yeah, I, so I, clearly the uh, you know the virus likely has uh, likely comes and goes almost like any other virus, but the damage that it leaves behind is uh, very difficult. Um, so separate from that is always uh, you know I'm I'm convinced that you can contract it again. It's just we haven't had um, a, a lot of experience there just yet. So you do, uh, many people do develop antibodies after contracting it, but the, the, the reality is, is having to deal with some of the damage. We're hearing all of these stories about um, people uh, having long-term impacts to their memory, to their health, to their ability to be able to um, do basic uh, exercise. Um, and so, you know, for, for me, I feel like I can still uh, feel some of the damage there certainly kept um, your mind a little bit foggy for a couple of uh, months in, in ways. And my wife had uh, lost her uh, sense of taste and smell for a month. Uh, and so fortunately, she's gotten most of that back. But it, I think it's all about managing that inflammation. But it'll be a long time before we know fully what uh, COVID-19 can, can do to the body, I think. I hope the children are doing well. Good. Fortunately, uh, just mild fevers um, for a day or two I was most the extent of it and didn't notice anything else uh, different with them. Um, you know, your immune system is uh, a little bit shot afterwards. And so uh, immediately afterwards for the next few weeks, we would notice a few differences in how your body reacts to, to different things. And that included the kids. Um, but we're fortunate that uh, that they were uh, mild as well. Uh, move out a little bit uh, from from, and thank you for sharing those very personal experiences that you have had and are still having. And and tell us uh, around the state how are things going in Roanoke? There are colleges there. There, as 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 Roanoke as a city, and then the Roanoke County area is it. Uh, are people coping well and, and staying as safe as possible? Yeah, we, we do have cases uh, on the uptick here in the, the Roanoke Valley. I think uh, here we have a number of universities, as you mentioned. Uh, relatively speaking, they've handled it um, uh, pretty well. Some are doing all virtual. Uh, Virginia Tech has chosen to uh, bring the uh, students back on campus, but have had uh, some pretty strict rules in, in place, but I know it's still uh, a challenge there uh, for sure. But inside of the city and in the county, we've, we've seen cases continue to, and the rate of uh, spread continue to grow. While we didn't have uh, a lot of cases early on, or at least documented cases early on, we're, we're seeing that continue to uptick. And I'm most worried, David, about uh, the this winter. I think this winter is going to be a difficult time for a lot of folks. 
um, emotionally and otherwise, um, because it's it's uh, we see that the virus, uh, as most viruses, spreads uh, in the winter um, pretty strongly, because most people are are inside, um, but and at the same time not being able to be with friends and family like we normally would. Uh, now is the time to begin preparing and thinking about our plan for the winter to keep our our wits about us. I know in your work in the General Assembly and, and as you're uh, nearing the time now of getting a budget ready to send to the governor, there's there's concern and efforts to try to get more of the CARES Act money out to, to help in localities. Um, I'm sure that there are businesses and individuals and school systems in your area that really uh, need some need some infusion of some cash to help them out. Yeah, so I mean, maximizing the use of the CARES dollars, I think, is uh, important, uh, making sure that we are uh, doing our best to, to not only help localities, but to help uh, the small businesses and schools that you mentioned. Um, I think that the governor has done a pretty good job of trying to outline uh, where some of those CARES dollars are going and day by day, we're seeing more and more of those dollars divvied out. Uh, a few more uh, came out uh, for rent and mortgage relief. Um, uh, but more importantly, I've been hoping that the General Assembly, as I'm watching this final budget uh, to be passed, um, really looks long and hard at our reserves, uh, not making any um, you know, additional deposits into certain reserves that we really don't need to. All the rating agencies say it's normal for us to be dipping into those reserves during difficult times. I mean, that's what they're for. And so I think that uh, making sure that we're supporting our localities um, and schools, especially as well as small businesses during this difficult time with all the resources on the table is going to be important. Uh, so I, I, um, I worry about that, and I'm hoping that the budget conferees will do everything that they can. Sam, if we move to a different subject, I have been, I would say, impressed over the years at the efforts that you've made in working with your constituents on bill writing. Uh, you and your colleagues most frequently speak and, and say, the ideas that you get for bills uh, most often come from constituents, but you've taken it a step farther and, and having a way of, of helping your constituents in bill writing. I haven't asked you about that in some time, but how, how is that going? And, and have, have you had constituents that have really caught on to that and been interested in it? Yeah, we've had a, a number of different folks who um, have uh, uh, really been involved. I mean, when I say a number, hundreds of people who have been involved over the past couple cycles as we've been doing this. And it's, so it's been really neat to watch the process play out. The bottom line is, is I think that we want people to trust the institution. And when you understand more about how the process works, it builds trust. And uh, so one of the uh, best comments I heard out of one of our first sessions of the You Write the Bill program was, uh, you know, writing bills is hard. And because um, we all have lots of great ideas, but turning that into actual policy uh, is uh, something that there are many nuances uh, associated with. And, and I really appreciated, uh, you know, that comment, but also people really digging down deep. And it's a program that helps people come up with ideas, but then also form groups, uh, brainstorm uh, those what those policy ideas look like as far as bills, and then taking it a step further and having DLS help draft uh, those bill ideas uh, under my name, building a lobbying plan, and even thinking about what patrons um, can help carry those bills uh, around the, the Commonwealth. Uh, so this past year, we passed House Bill uh, 99, which uh, prevents, helps to prevent discrimination against victims of domestic violence who are seeking housing, for example. Uh, you know, many times victims of domestic violence feel like they can't leave their home because they don't have another place to go. So this makes it a little bit easier. But that was an idea from a constituent who came to you write the bill session and it passed and now it's uh, law. Uh, so we uh, love to be able to uh, 
build that kind of trust and involvement anytime we can. Well, the 2013 session will be coming up not long after you finish the special session. So uh, have your constituents worked on any bills that, that you'd be willing to give a little preview or shout out? Or are they still in the process of trying to come up with them? Well, what a, what a crazy year 2020 has been. And as we're preparing for the 2021 general session, we're thinking about um, how to best do that. What we ended up having, uh, David, was a special You Write the Bill session for the special session. Uh, and um, out of that, three uh, bill ideas came out. Um, two of the bill ideas uh, were drafted and uh, my colleagues um, well, three of them, all three of them were drafted. I submitted one. My colleagues submitted a couple of, of other ones. I became the chief co-patron on those other two. Those other two uh, have now passed uh, the General Assembly and hopefully on their way to uh, the governor. And that was largely around what can we do to be, um, you know, improving our approach to, to law enforcement. And just some common sense like citizen review boards, uh, you know, uh, trying to prevent some of the militarization that happens. Uh, and, and so I appreciate some of the um, feedback that we've had from folks and their involvement in this process as it's been a very active, uh, very active summer. Uh, and they've watched it kind of play out in the special session. Well, Sam, we really appreciate your being on this week in Virginia. And before we would end, uh, anything else you'd like to say? Uh, both for the folks of the Roanoke Valley and around the state? Well, I appreciate you having me uh, yet again, uh, David. I uh, very much uh, uh, enjoy our time together, but I've enjoyed going into my eighth session uh, in, the, uh, in the General Assembly. Um, so we'll, we'll continue uh, to try to fight this good fight. We're, we've given some thought into um, you know, potentially doing that in a, in a whole new sphere as I've been giving some serious consideration into running for Lieutenant Governor uh, next year in a, in a big field uh, of folks with lots of different ideas. And I certainly love what I'm doing in my current capacity. So uh, we'll, we'll certainly think long and hard about that. Um, but regardless, um, there's a lot of work left to do. Thank you very much, Sam. Appreciate your work and thank you for being on This Week in Virginia. Look forward to our next conversation. My pleasure. Thank you, David.